Good morning, adventurers. Good morning from Cologne, Germany. Yeah. It is our last full day here in Germany, which is crazy. This road trip went by so fast, but tomorrow, we are flying to Bristol. Yeah. We'll be, I think, doing a road trip. We haven't quite planned it. I think that's the theme of this leg of our journey is we're not planning anything until the yeah. night before we go somewhere. So Sometimes that can be fun, but yeah. it's also a little stressful. Stay tuned for tomorrow's vlog. Yeah. Or, did I say blog? I'm auto-correcting myself. Stay tuned for tomorrow's vlog so you'll see what we end up doing. But yesterday we had to say goodbye to our beloved road tripping vehicle. It was quite emotional for us. Was that I don't love the car that much. Today we are ending our trip here the best way we know how. We are gonna go eat all the food here in Cologne. I had no idea that there are so many amazing local dishes here. But before we do that, we are in Germany. They have amazing coffee. Third wave oh, yeah. coffee is That's one great. of our favorite things about coming to Germany is the oh coffee seat is so good. It's so good. And luckily we are in this really cool um, neighborhood a little south of the city center, but there is a very good roastery right up the block. So we're gonna go get that and then we're gonna take you on a food journey. So we're gonna be eating delicious food. We're gonna be probably drinking some beer. We're gonna oh, be exploring yeah. Cologne. It's gonna mm -hmm. be a good day. you're at a fancy place when they don't let you put milk in your cold brew. <laughs> he would have let me, but he said it's much better without it. So yeah. I'm going raw today, just the cold brew. Yeah, it's a little annoying, but it usually means the coffee's really good. And I went with the nitro. Anytime they have nitro on tap, that's what I'm getting. It's so good. Oh man, it's so interesting. It's so like cold and chocolatey and like creamy and it has that little layer of foam on the top. It's really nice. Oh yeah. They do some really wild concoctions here, I think. So oh, man, that's definitely good. check it out if you're into coffee. This kind of kind of coffee here doesn't need milk anyway. When we were doing our research for the best places to get like some local German food, we found that these brow houses are the best place to do that. Now brow house is just like a brew house, so that means they're gonna have delicious food, but they're also going to have beer. But we're gonna head in there, get some lunch, and also some booze. So first things first, we got a couple beers. This is the uh, Reisdorf Kolsch. Now, we actually didn't really realize this. We've only drank Kolsch a few times in our lives, but um, Kolsch is actually a beer specific to Cologne. We had no idea. It has to be brewed in Cologne to be called Kolsch. But uh, from what we've read, it's similar to a Pilsner. Um, we usually drink Pilsners. That's like our favorite beer, but we don't really know that much about beer. But to me, it tastes pretty similar, but it's real good. And they serve it in these cute little 200 centiliter glasses. Our first dishes of the day have arrived. The one I'm going to try is Himmel und Erd. Not sure if that's how you pronounce it, but it translates to heaven and earth. It's mashed potatoes with applesauce on top, and these ones are covered in a black pudding, fried black pudding, and onions. It looks like really nice and stewed onions on there. I read that it can also come with you know liverwurst or bacon on there, but as long as you have the mashed potatoes and the applesauce, then you're good. I'm gonna assemble the perfect bite, so I'm gonna get a little bit of everything. Oh, look at that. <laughs> that is so good. It's like perfectly creamy mashed potatoes, really like sweet and savory applesauce on there and then adding in the stewed onions and the black pudding. Honestly, we usually, or I usually don't love black pudding, but this mixes in so seamlessly, it gives it a little bit of a, a crunch and like a little more heartiness to the bite, but it's not an overwhelming flavor. The potatoes and the applesauce are definitely the stars here. And then the onions are just perfect on top of that. This is pretty good and I love that it's like a whole meal that you can just mix all together and enjoy. It is my turn. This dish here is called Halva Han, I think is how you say it. 
but it means um, half rooster. Now, obviously there isn't any meat on my plate, so uh, it's really just a piece of old Gouda is how it was described, and rye bread. They can serve it with butter and uh, onions, which is how we got it, and then a little bit of mustard in the middle and a little salad on the side. What we read was that this is typically eaten for breakfast, lunch, dinner, pretty much any time, and it is commonly served with kolsch, so hopefully we're doing it right. I've assembled the perfect bite here. I've got bread, some butter on it, a big piece of the cheese, and a little bit of the mustard on top. Now, I tasted the mustard to make sure it wasn't overly hot or spicy, because in our last food video, as you guys may remember, I took a huge dollop of it and it had a bunch of like horseradish or something in it and it destroyed me, but I learned my lesson. All right, down the hatch. Oh, that's good. It's actually really tasty. The cheese has a really strong taste, but it's not like funky, like a lot of cheeses can be. The bread is perfectly kind of toasted on the outside, so you get this like doughy center, but this crunch on the outside. The butter is obviously great. The mustard, I think I put the perfect amount, so it's just a little bit of tanginess in there, but this is a really nice light lunch. I'm not a huge fan of onions, as you may know, so I'm going to leave these for Allison to partake of. I get them of. all. All the stewed onions, all the raw onions, give them to me. Guys, it's an absolutely incredible day. So we decided to come to this wild park that was at, it's part of a bigger park that was nearby. But uh, they should have some animals roaming around, some for us to pet maybe if we're lucky. I think so, I think they sell food so that you can feed some of them. Also, it is completely free to come here, which is awesome. Yes. We've got ducks, furry cows, goats, sheep. What else have we got? Chickens, donkeys, donkeys. But uh, we've also got a lot of screaming children. So be be advised. You're going to have to deal with that as well. But it's worth it. Pet all these cute little animals. And we also like that we don't really go to that many zoos because they don't usually give the animals that much room to roam around. But places like this are really cool because they have tons of room and they're pretty segregated from the people if they want to be. They can just like run off into the corner or the center of the field yeah. and the people aren't allowed to go. Yeah. Which is good because they can get pretty annoying, I'm sure. <laughs> oh, I imagine being bombarded by little tiny hands all day. But yeah. they also sell food here that you can feed to the animals. So keep an eye out for that. You guys, we took a tram down to kind of the city center, and this place is bumping. We've got a stage with some guys singing some badass music and all kinds of food. It's like a festival down here. It's great. Yeah. This enormous structure behind us is Cologne Cathedral, and it is really intimidating. It's so big and it's so dark and ominous looking. But interesting fact about this cathedral, it was actually the tallest building in the world from 1880 to 1890. So I guess they started building this in 1248, and then they stopped building it in 1473. It was unfinished until 1842, I believe, when they started construction again. In 1880, they finished it as, according to the original plans, and then now, since the 1950s, they've been restoring it. So it's it's, <laughs> it's gone through a lot of phases. It's taken a while to get a, this thing done, a basically. Long time. Yeah. 
We have had so much fun putting animals and exploring Cologne, but it is dinner time now. So we have come to Brauhaus Zion, which is actually one of the oldest bars in the world. It says it was established in 1318, and it was actually destroyed during World War II, like completely, and they had to rebuild it, I believe in the 50s. But now it's here, it's very close to the cathedral, which is very nice. And when you sit down, they pretty much almost immediately bring you a beer, which we love. So we're gonna order a couple more traditional dishes and it's gonna be amazing. These dishes are amazing looking. So first up, we have one called Ice Vine, which literally translates to ice leg. We read that it's because the bone that comes in the middle of this ham hock used to be used for ice skating blades, which is pretty bananas. The meat is pickled ham that's been cured and then slightly boiled, and then it comes on a huge bed of sauerkraut with a whole bunch of mashed potatoes. And then this little guy is sour broth, which is a sour pot roast, essentially. So it's cooked in all of these amazing sour spices for days, and then ours is covered in a raisin sauce. It comes with, I believe it's pickled cabbage, and then two potato dumplings. One interesting thing about the sour broth is that traditionally it was used with horse meat. I read that you can still find that in some places, but today it's most likely gonna be beef, and that's what ours is, a beef pot roast. You guys, I am absolutely starving. When he set this big hunk of meat in front of me, I was just like, oh my God, I gotta eat this. Um, but also the bells are going off on the church behind us, and I'm not sure how long they go off, but they've been going off for like 10 minutes, so I hope it doesn't cause too much background noise, but I can't wait any longer, I gotta eat this thing. This is an intimidating hunk of meat. You've got this like layer of gooey skin on the outside and then all this meat on the inside all wrapped around this bone. I'm not even sure where to start with this thing. Whoa. Well, it's gonna be really juicy and tender because it just kind of fell right off the bone there. Oh yeah, that's gonna be good. Is that too big of a piece? <laughs> Probably. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. That's really good. <laughs> The taste that you get is just really nice, juicy, stewed pork. That's what it tastes like. There's like boiled, I don't really, I'm not sure what I was expecting. I've never had like a pickled meat, but it doesn't really have like that sour of a taste to me. It just tastes like tender, boiled pork. And it's really friggin' tasty. I don't think I could eat this whole thing myself. So this is definitely like, we could share this plate for sure. I feel like this is what a king would eat or something. This is like a king's feast. Look at this giant thing. <laughs> this is amazing. Well, I am excited to try my sour roast. I'm not really sure what to expect with this raisin sauce. All the pictures I saw had this like super dark sauce on it. I didn't know what it was. Ooh. Mm. It almost reminds me of like plum sauce or hoisin sauce but then the meat kind of tastes like beef jerky. It's like, su it's super tender though, but really salty and really flavorful. I don't think I've ever had like a meat dish quite like this or a pot roast that is in this sort of sauce, but it goes together really well. I'm gonna try it with this potato dumpling. Look at this sucker. Oh, oh my, my God, gosh. Nice. <laughs> mm. The sauce is almost reminiscent of like teriyaki sauce. It's like a sweet yeah. and salty it's sauce. It's a little sweet, a little tangy, mm -hmm. and then the potatoes have like this my gooeyness God. Potato to them. dumplings are yeah. so good. It's very nice. Allison just tasted my big old chunk of pork. What did you think? Oh my God, it's so good. It reminds me of when we were kids and you go to like theme parks or carnivals, you'd get like a big oh, yeah. like smoked turkey leg or something like that. But it just reminds me of like just really delicious, like perfectly cooked meat. It's so good. back at our place. This concludes our adventures here in Germany for the time being. We will be back for sure. You couldn't keep us away if you wanted to. Ah. But if we have any Germans watching, sorry if you were cringing at our pronunciations of certain things, we did our best. Um, but we wanted to say, as we do in most of our food videos, if you have any recommendations on your favorite German dishes or your favorite places to get those dishes in Cologne, make sure you leave a comment below to help out other people watching this video who might be traveling here. Or if we come back, we can use your suggestions as well. Yeah, and if you want to try any of the dishes we tried today, make sure you look below. We'll put where we tried them, what the dishes were, and how much they cost so that you can re recreate this delicious day. Oh yeah, but we will see you tomorrow 
on our way to the UK. What? Woo! We're so excited to be going back. One of our favorite countries to visit. Very oh cool people gosh. up in the UK. I'm so excited. And I the weather looks like it's going to be a little bit cooler than it has been over here yeah, in Europe. That'll be nice. So, uh, because that'll it's, be lovely. It's been a warm year. We had a delicious time today. Yeah. It was so much fun. The perfect way to end our time in Germany. And if you're new to this channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And more importantly, there's actually a little bell next to the subscribe button. If you click that, that will actually notify you when we post a new video so that you can be one of the first to watch it. Yeah, and see all the delicious adventures. Yeah. All right, with that, good night, adventurers. We'll see you on the road.